been quite some time since I made my video about Empire State Troops and how they're the best low-tier troops in the game. In that video, though, a lot of people in the comments and since have told me that, uh, yeah, they think that Dwarf Warriors are superior low-tier troops, and Dwarf Warriors certainly have a lot going for them. There's no question about that. Skew definitely more into defense than Empire State Troops. And here we've got Waze Dwarfs up against uh, Beastmen. A double Saigor out in the far field. We've got a couple Bestigor as well. Some Ungor Spearman Herd with Shields. A few Ungor Raiders, Harpies, a Morgor the Shadow Gave, and a Lore of Shadows caster. Way here, he's got the two cannons, a whole mess of Dwarf Warriors, four, or sorry, three Dwarf Warriors with hand weapon and shield, and five great weapons along with a couple Iron Drakes, uh, Fire Drakes, that is, and a couple Troll Hammer Torpedoes, and two Slayers, Grombrindle leading the way. Dwarf Warriors, though, what do they got going for them in comparison? Certainly to Empire State Troops, uh, much better armor. 85 armor is definitely very good for a unit of this cost. Them and Miners both have very, very good armor. Unlike Miners, though, they also have very good melee defense. 40 melee defense. Excuse me, again, very good for a unit of this uh, cost. 28 weapon strength and 22 melee attack is not amazing. 22 melee attack in particular is not great. Only 12 charge as well, so their offensive stats are not great, but they also come with charge defense against large and magic resistance, of course, uh, being dwarfs, they've got that sweet magic resistance and yeah, charge defense against large, quite nice to have. The great weapon variant does lose the charge defense against large, but picks up two weapon strength overall, going to 30 weapon damage, 23 of which is armor piercing, 18 charge bonus, so that six extra charge, definitely something. 24 melee attack out of 22, but their melee defense does drop by 10, which is pretty significant. Uh, that being said, they're also relatively cheap, you know, um, given the choice between a spear and a great weapon, it's interesting because normally the spears are your way to get charge defense against large, but with regular dwarf warriors, you know, the hand weapon ones do, um, although I do think that, you know, having spears is certainly beneficial. Um, I don't know, for some various reasons, I would still probably put Empire State Troops above them, but dwarf warriors certainly can give a lot of low-tier troops a run for their money here. Way uh, using his cannons to go after the Saigors, but I mean, there's 3,000 points worth of Saigor artillery here throwing rocks, so he's going to have to advance nonetheless. Uh, Iron Drakes are taking a pounding right now, and the Slayers are kind of pushing out, out to the wide flanks here. Harpies swooping in, trying to get at the cannons, but we've got a couple of Dwarf Warriors here to protect, and this is a situation where, I mean, Harpies have pretty good weapon strength, 44 weapon strength overall, but only 23 melee attack means they're going to be basically minimum hit chance against these war warriors. A little bit of fire from the fire drakes help debuff their leadership and lead to them most likely routing. Nope, in fact, they do not route. They're going to sweep over and go after said iron drakes. War warriors may potentially follow up there. Meanwhile, the slayers coming to attack. You can see the Eye of Morslet taking significant damage from the cannon. Definitely cost effective for the cannons. The slayers, this though... Beautiful move by Wei. He comes in, the Slayers run all the way up to the ankle of the Saigor, and then immediately turn around and start running in the other direction. And what this is going to do is pull a number of the Beastman infantry away from that Saigor, and you can see these Slayers like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> They're barely staying out in front of these Ungor Spearman Herd. Spearman Herd just a little bit slower. Uh, let's see, 41 speed versus 40, in fact, just slightly faster, but not so much that they're able to actually get in contact there. <laughs> oh, fun stuff. Yeah, Harpies, meanwhile, are coming through. Four Warriors are relatively ab easily able to see them off, but at the same time, they are routing some of these tattered fire drakes who've been pounded by the Saigors. So, yeah, right now, this Saigor, I am more so definitely feeling the sting of those cannons long-term. Trying to throw some rocks at some of these Dwarf Warriors. Even with making good contact, though, I mean, it's a 450-cost unit of infantry, right? It's really not that big of a loss at the end of the day. Uh, which is why, you know, they're arguably, you know, one of the best low-tier infantry for just holding things in place. I mean, they're certainly not undead, but they do offer a lot of upside and a really nice kind of triangular collapse here. Great weapons on one side, hand weapons here, and the other great weapons from behind. And suddenly these Bestigor and the uh, Ungor Raiders, or sorry, Ungor Spearmen that are mixed in there are just in some serious trouble. <laughs> Getting fully surrounded here, and this is a situation where the Dwarf Warrior's lack of melee attack isn't so much of an issue. Vestigor Herd only have 24 melee defense, so, you know, the 24 melee attack of the Dwarf Warriors is perfectly serviceable. A heavy RNG, given the, the uh, kind of chance to hit and everything else, but... 
A little bit of uh, Iron Drake Fire helps to swing things back. And the Beastmen advance, at least the left side, has been somewhat broken up. Uh, the Iron Drakes are gone, though. Harpies have been able to deal with the remnants of the Fire Drakes. Uh, I have more Slib still throwing rocks, although he is his time is uh, definitely limited. We'll see if the cannons can actually finish it off. But the other side gore, of course, still throwing rocks, making some nice contact there on those great weapons over here. Four four years again get matched up against Bestigor and Ungor Spearman. A little bit of a blob fight here. But uh, Grombrindle, obviously, again, making a difference. Morger definitely doesn't make as much of a difference as Grombrindle does, given the Smoke Bomb now debuffing melee defense even further. Bestigor heard only one melee defense. So these uh, Dwarf Warriors, you know, that's certainly one way to boost their melee attack, is to lower your opponent's melee defense, right? Ice Penumbral Pendulum used in response. Magic Resistance certainly helps against that, although it's only 25%, so they will still take substantial damage from it. Certainly something like Burning Head that does no armor-piercing damage and, you know, magic damage is going to be basically useless against the Dawi. Although it should be noted that Kindle Flame just about negates the magic resistance since it is a magic flaming attack. Both of those things would apply and you'd get, what, 3% resistance after 25 minus 22. So, anyway, Gromadal has no fear has been popped, keeping those wavering dwarf warriors in the fight. Looks like we've got some... Uh, Spawn summons from Morger. I'm going to be pushing to the back line, trying to get on some of those ranged units. The cannons are both still online. Managed to shut down the Eye of Morslid out there. Yep, laying in the sands of MP Crossroads. Now we've got the other Cygor just getting pounded. Somehow, these Slayers out here fighting Ungol Raiders. Not really sure what happened there, but let's keep it close. Let's Dwarf Warriors run around, try and see off the rest of the Harpies, which uh, credit to the Beastman player here. Been able to keep these Harpies online for some time. Made pretty good use of them. Hasn't been able to fully shut down the cannons, unfortunately, but... Yeah, the Iron Drakes, we'll look at the value afterwards to see how much their value was held in check. Some nice point-blank friendly fire there from the cannons. Always a good time. Oh, yeah. Flagor shot. Hitting some of the Slayers in the distance. Still plenty of numbers, though, even though this balance power is slightly in favor of the Beastmen. Part of that is because of the summons, of course, but nice positioning by these Ungol Raiders firing into the flank. Obviously, lack of missile block chance will be an issue, and even the, you know, low armor piercing damage of these Ungol Raiders, the 90 unit model volume is still good enough, and I mean, 1 AP per shot with 12 base missile damage, the 85 is giving you anywhere from, what, 42.5 to 85% mitigation of that, so, I mean, you could even be getting you know, 6 plus arm base missile damage depending on the armor roll, getting through, and so, like, what, 7 damage per shot sometimes, depending on the roll. Uh, yeah, it's still some damage, definitely. They're gonna now go into melee mode, looks like, and chase off those great weapons, but as the spawn fall, balance of power starts to stabilize a little bit, the Dawi are able to get their guns back online, whereas the Beastman artillery Saigor is still online, but starting to run low on ammunition. Finally firing directly kind of at the cannons and these other ranged targets holding this pocket right here. Handful of Iron Drakes that remain. A few Dwarf Warriors protecting as well. But since most of the infantry threat's gone for the Beastmen, you can see, again, Bestigor just getting surrounded by Dwarf Warriors and dragged down, especially by the Great Weapons, just trading so good here. Morger gets routed by Grombrindle, and that's going to put a significant dent in the balance of power as Morger kind of... Uh, by his nature, falsely inflates the balance of power due to his uh, summon abilities not being tracked by said balance of power. But anyway, Slayer is now finally getting into combat against the Saigor. That tease earlier finally coming true with a different Saigor, and I'm pretty sure this is a whole different unit of Slayers as well. But there you go. Who's this guy? Oh, hey, bud. Go from your POV right here as you charge in. Oh, yeah, man, this game's so awesome. Ooh, cannon shot right to the belly, right to the sternum. That one sails over his head. This point weighs in pretty commanding position, so we'll go ahead and fast forward through the rest. Yeah, fun stuff, though. Nice wide line of Dawi. No chariots to speak of for the Beastmen, which I de definitely think Razor chariots are, you know, kind of required in this matchup. Potentially the cannons and the Iron Drakes could have countered them, along with uh, the Grombrindle smoke bombs, so even with them, it still would have been potentially a tough, but... Yeah, in terms of Dwarf Warriors, I mean, one nice thing about being a cheap troop type is it's not hard to pay for yourself, even with relatively low offensive stats. 
And by and large, pretty much all the Dwarf Warriors do pay for themselves, which is kind of nice, you know. Uh, again, don't have to do a lot to do it, but having your low-tier troops be cost-effective gives you a pretty good uh, kind of base to work from in terms of builds. And obviously, Dwarves, it's their theme to be tanky and even have their kind of low-tier units be, I mean, just absolute obstinate objects, right? So, anyway. Um, yeah, the Slayers also do pretty solid. One of them, at least. Fire Drakes and Iron Drakes, a little bit of a tough time. Cannons, though, end up paying dividends against the Saigors, which, fortunately, one of them, especially the more expensive one, <laughs> I mostly did not pay out. The uh, regular Saigor, a little bit closer to paying for itself, but not quite what you'd want to see. Ungor Raiders are awesome. I would definitely take five in this matchup <laughs> a lot of the time. Just because uh, they're just so cost-effective and the dwarves can't really catch them. Stock also helps them stay, stay safe from ranged fire. But, yeah, Harpy's also pretty solid in this matchup. A couple of them pay for themselves pretty well, just chasing, routing stuff off and so on. Best Gore Herd, though, definitely have a rough go of it. Uh, between Grombrindle debuffing their melee defense, getting lit up by the Trollhammer torpedoes, and, of course, these mass amounts of great weapon <laughs> dwarf warriors... Just way too much for them to handle so they kind of fall apart here uh, so pretty fun stuff big thanks to way for sending this one in in terms of low tier troops there's a number of like good options right like you can really make an argument for quite a few different things the reason i go with empire knights as being the best is because they're like kind of the most well balanced of everything they sit at a really nice sweet spot in terms of cost um, you know, you've got some variations as well, whether you want to skimp on cost and go cheap or, you know, get a little bit more stats. You've even got Halberdiers kind of now more so in the lower tier discussion than they used to be. Um, but with Dwarf Warriors, a little bit more limited. You've just got these two options here. Miners are quite a, sort of a separate thing we'll talk about probably another time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, having the armor-piercing variant is nice, but only 50 points more you get the Empire Halberdiers, which actually has better stats, has armor-piercing, <laughs> you know, um, in addition here. Actually, let's go with this. Yeah, much better stats than Dwarf Warriors. Great weapons, charge defense against large. Of course, much lower armor, it has to be said, but higher HP, which is actually kind of surprising to me. Uh, faster, you know, more melee attack. The, again, way more melee defense. Anti-large, lower weapon strength overall, but... That bonus versus large 16, they're going to be hitting way harder against large targets. So, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, the, the Empire's a little bit more variety, a little bit more cost efficiency because they're just that much slightly cheaper. And uh, the Dwarf defensive stats are very good. You do pay a little bit of a premium for them. And also, lower melee stats means they're less likely to actually pay for themselves fighting. Uh, you know, they may tank damage and hold things in place, which tactically can pay for itself. But in terms of raw value, they're less likely to. A few things you can do to juice them up, though. Like I said, debuffing melee defense. So, like Oath of Vengeance from Thorgrim or, of course, Grombrindle's Smoke Bomb. Going to be a much more common pick. Do debuff opponent's melee defense. So you can use that to your advantage. Uh, Thorgrim's also got this uh, here. Great Book of Grudges. Plus 9 melee attack and an AoE. Is pretty nice for the dwarves. Suddenly putting these guys at, what, like 31 melee attack? Uh, 33 melee attack for the great weapons, a little bit closer to Empire State Troops in terms of offense, and then they just have more defense, so they're just better, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, what else can you do? Belagar, I don't remember, I don't think he has any, yeah, these are all primarily defensive buffs. Um, I don't think Orgrim has any, Thorgrim has any AoE buffs here. Um, you can get plus 12 charge bonus, which... You know, it's not a percentage-based charge bonus buff, which is good because dwarfs have terrible charge bonus to begin with, but plus 12 charge bonus on the dwarf warriors, the gray weapons in particular, puts them up to 30 charge, which suddenly you're hitting for 54 melee attack and, uh, you know, 60 weapon strength, right? That is considerable for a unit of this cost, and especially given their defensive stats, they're not going to just die immediately either, so... Believe it or not, the Silver Horn of Vengeance, at one point, very much a meme item, because it used to be percentage-based, but now just a straight-up plus 12 charge bonus can be pretty decent. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, you can juice up their defensive stats other ways, but that's pretty much it. Um, but you'll see them, obviously, as a big staple of dwarf play. They're kind of the backbone of many dwarf builds, just due to their sheer defensiveness. They allow you to hold units in place while you shoot them or kill them with slayers or, you know, whatever's actually meant to do damage, because they're by and large not really meant to be the damage dealers 
in your army. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.